Hey, what's going on? I'd like to talk about uh, this problem here where I've got a circular hoop of wire attached to three mutually perpendicular boards at distances uh, three foot from their common point of intersection, and we're going to call that common point of intersection the origin. Um, and I want to describe it with a vector, right? So let's go ahead and categorize what we need to figure out, right? So uh, what are we given? We're given um, a common intersection. And that intersection is the origin. Um, no, let's not write it with a big O. Let's just write it as zero vector. All right. And um, three points on a circle. And we can give those three points names. Let's call them A. Um, and A will be uh, three feet in the x hat direction. B, which may as well be um, three feet in the y direction. And C, uh, yeah, I don't like that capital C. C, which is three feet in the z direction. Okay, so we've got those three points. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to find um, a vector equation for the circle. Vector equation for the circle. Now, of course, we could do this the easy way, which is just um, draw a circle, right? Uh, and that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle um, using vectors and using some of these um, different concepts in this in this chapter, right? Uh, so our first thing we want to do is we want to plot the circle, right? I mean, this is. This is sort of obvious. This is the way you start figuring things out as you draw things and then you start figuring out what to do with the drawing just a little bit later, right? So we need a representation. Uh, we need three axes, like a z-axis and an x-axis and a y-axis. Go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So these are our three points. Right? And um, basically what we're going to need is a circle that goes through all three points. Not the world's most beautiful circle. And I'll rescale over here just a little bit. Yeah. See how fun that is? Rescale. And there's my circle and it's sort of in this plane here, this is inscribed, but an inscribed triangle. So it's not really in this plane. It's going to cut the XY plane, the YZ plane, and the XZ plane with these little, uh, with making this triangle. Don't care about that triangle right now. All we care about is the um, X, Y, and Z points, but we do care about where this center is, for example. So we want to plot the circle and we use it to deduce information. All right. Uh, so what's the first thing that we want to deduce? Well, what did I just say? The center. What is the center? Well, the center is a really easy way to talk about the center if you have something like this. You've got three um, equidistant points on a circle. The center is going to be the average of those things. So uh, we could just say the center of the circle um, and I'm going to call that capital N is equal to um, A plus B plus C over three, assuming that this soft lead doesn't break. I use soft lead for these because it's darker. Um, so A plus B plus C over three, that's um, one foot, one foot, one foot. One, 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 
that's the center right there, right? So um, our center is 111. Uh, what else do we need? We need a, um, what, what should we call this? We need a uh, radius. So now that we have the center, the uh, radius A, uh, little a, is going to be uh, the distance between N and any one of those points, so A, right, which is the square root of, let's see, one foot minus three feet squared plus one foot squared plus one foot squared, which is the square root of four square feet plus one square foot plus one square foot. Add them all up, that's the square root of six feet. Okay? Easy enough, something that you can do in your head, right? You didn't really need me to do that. Um, now what we need to do is find a way to figure out how to draw this. Well, the way I'm going to figure out how to draw this is I'm going to have to find two perpendicular points on this line, all right? Or it, four, two perpendicular directions that are in this plane, the same as this um, triangle. So one of them I can just choose, like the direction from x to y. That's, that's going to be one uh, particular plane or one particular direction for this plane. I can choose any two, right? Um, but uh, I, I will use um, I will use the ones that I think are most uh, most obvious. So there are two dire two directions in a plane, and we need them to be perpendicular, right? But first, we have to just choose one, right? Which is uh, first the first direction, which is from from A to B, right? So I'm going to call this X hat with a capital X is equal to um, B minus A over the magnitude of B minus A. So this is going to have to be a unit vector, right? So we take the diff this distance or this displacement and divide it by the distance. All right, so that is B minus A is um, three feet in the Y direction minus three feet in the X direction, just like that. And then we divide that by the square root of um, these two guys squared. So that's three feet squared plus three feet squared, right? So that's um, one over the square root of two, you may have guessed, minus one, one, zero. So that's my first direction. Um, what's my second direction? Well, my second direction probably should be from the center of this line to Z, right? So that's going to be perpendicular and go straight through that center. So I can use Well, it's going to go th straight through the center, so I can just use the center again. I can look at the difference between um, Z and N and uh, find that other direction. That's going to be awesome. So uh, let's choose a second direction. All right. And that's going to be uh, C minus N over... Oh. I've got to make sure these are parentheses and these are straight lines C minus N all right um, let's see C minus N what do we do with C minus N that is uh, three feet minus one foot which is two foot in the X 
or actually it's going to be two foot in the Z. So all the other ones are going to be minus whatever these are. So it's minus one foot in the X, minus one foot in the Y, and minus or plus two feet in the Z hat directions, divided by the um, magnitude of this, which happens to be the same as the magnitude from there. So that's divided by the square root of six feet. Isn't that lucky? All right. So that's equal to one over the square root of six. Um, and so we cancel out the units, good. Uh, minus one, minus one, um, two. All right, so those are our two directions. Um, since they're all four things that are in that plane, that means that um, we should have everything in the plane. Uh, maybe I'd like to write the vector function right now, event, you know, directly, but I think I'm going to check x is perpendicular to y, right? Uh, now, you might remember how to do this from the vector algebra chapter, right? It's fairly simple. X dot y should be equal to zero, right? All right, so x dot y is this guy times this guy, so this is one over the square root of two square roots of three times the dot product of these things. One times minus one is one minus one times zero times two is zero plus zero is equal to zero. Check. Good. All right. So I want to do that right away because, you know, this isn't exactly how I did it when I was planning. And I really want to not end up with something that I, you know, something that's wrong to start with. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm all on my own here because I just figured out a brand new way to do things that's a lot easier than, you know, I, it looks to me like it was a lot easier than what I did in my plan. Um, let's see what happens. Four. Uh, now we need to actually write the function. So how are we going to write that function? Well, uh, we have a center, right? And so uh, we have a center and we have um, radii and things like that, right? So what we need to do is we need to add that center or add a circle of radius the square root of six feet to that center point n. All right. So how are we going to do that? Um, well, uh, let's see. Our uh, function for the position for this thing, L, which is good for any value of, let's say, theta from 0 to 2 pi, is going to equal n plus um, some vector function of theta, right? And that vector function is just going to be what we think usually think of as a um, circle, right? So we'll have um, n plus cosine theta in that x direction plus sine theta in that y direction. Easy, right? N nothing to it. You know that. You, you know that's how a circle works. That's just basic trick, right? So I mean, we're not having any issues right now. This is exactly what you were expecting. So we've got this guy here, and all we have to do is start substituting stuff in, and we'll be good, right? So let's see. What did I call n? I called n one foot, one foot, one foot, right? And I called x hat. Uh, one over the square root of two times one minus one foot, one foot zero. And I called, uh, and I multiply that by cosine theta, excuse me. And I'm at the end, of course, so we add in one over the square root of six times minus one foot, or Oh, I missed, I messed up. This should be 
Okay. I forgot to multiply by the radius of the circle. All right. Sorry about that. I don't think that's a major failing, so we'll just carry on square root of 6 feet times cosine theta. the square root of 6 uh, times x plus the square root of 6 feet times sine theta times the direction y. So that's equal to 1 foot, 1 foot, 1 foot plus square root of 6 feet uh, cosine theta times minus 1, um, 1, 0, and divided by the square root of 2, plus the square root of 6 feet times sine theta um, times minus 1, minus 1, 2, divided by the square root of 6. Okay, these guys cancel. Square root of 2 cancels over here, so that's a square root of 3. And we're ready to rock and roll, right? Um, so here we have, um, let's see, uh, 1, um, how are we going to make this work? One plus, uh, let's see, 1 foot minus um, the square root of 6 feet cosine theta minus the square root of 6 feet sine theta. All right, and 1 foot minus the square root of, or plus the square root of 6 feet cosine theta minus the square root of 6 feet sine theta um, and then 1 foot plus it's not that's uh, a square root of it's not a square root of 6 things is it? yeah it's a square root of 6 feet yeah where am I where did I make the error or okay so Yeah, I made the error here. Okay, so square root of 3 feet here, 1 minus the square root of 3 feet, minus sine theta, and um, let's see, 1 foot plus the square root of 3 feet cosine theta minus 1 foot times sine theta. I'm committed. I'm going to finish this. One foot. Then we have one foot plus two feet um, cosine theta, and that should be sufficient. Yes, that's more or less what I got before. I do not have time for one more check. Um, I am very, very sorry. It's very nice that you got to see all this drawing with vectors and you got to see me making lots and lots of little algebra errors and correcting them and getting back to the uh, right spot. So if you go through this, I expect you're going to have a really fun time uh, figuring out all of this stuff, especially things like this, where this cosine theta should be a sine theta. Okay, now, now we're good. But, um... There we are. Uh, that's a viable. Um, that's a viable alternative. There are a couple of other vi viable alternatives because you can start just about anywhere with the sine theta. So, again, my uh, when I did it a different way, I started with a different direction. I had it, some different um, vectors for x and y, and I got a slightly different answer. But it was only a phase change of 90 degrees. All right. So, thank you very much for listening, and I will talk to you later about some uh, more complicated things that you'll love even more than this in a few minutes. All right, bye now.